What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project Elixir ROM. This is the 6th November 2023 build. Usually what ROMs I make videos on are very recent ones but this one is almost a month old you can say because it's almost end of November because it's 29th November when I'm shooting this video but I'm making this video so that you can actually notice the stability about this particular ROM. If you want the most stable experience on your Redmi Note 10 Pro this is the one I would say as of right now. The version of this project Elixir ROM is 3.13 and this one receives updates almost every month. So in the Android version section this is how it looks like. We have this project Elixir logo right there and that's the stock wallpaper I think that I'm using and here you will notice a check mark which says your device is officially supported and this is maintained by Krishna. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM and the maintainers and we have the Android version as 13 over here. If you make this clock 1 o'clock you will get the Android 13's easter egg which looks definitely beautiful. Let me just go back we have the security patch as September 1st 2023 but still in terms of stability I definitely would prefer this ROM personally if I had to use Redmi Note 10 Pro as a daily driver. And the Elixir version shows as 3.13 and we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 perf plus the snake shader showing as enforcing and here you can notice the build date again 5th November build this is. In the system settings this is how it looks like and these segments if you are noticing I have actually customized the settings from the customization panel yes this ROM has huge customization but I don't think that I can cover all the customizations in this video so i'll try to show you the customizations in a separate video after this one and on the bottom of this system settings you will get an elixir updater if you just go there you will get the system updater which looks beautiful again early access kind of section i think there is a paid version of this rom but i'm just using the normal version which is available for public always let me just go back we have the thermal profiles right here and you can set per app thermal profile to benchmark as i have done for the benchmarking apps let me just go back we have the gestures over here we have the swipe to screenshot on top and it is actually working fine there is a share edit delete and the google lens feature and the capture mode will appear when it's needed i guess and we have the quickly open camera as well then we have the system navigation gestures and in the settings of it we have the left edge right edge customization normal stuff but the swipe to invoke assistant is also working perfectly fine no need to worry we also have the full screen gestures and the pill length and the dead zone option the pill radius over here you cannot really customize but that's fine i guess and if you just go back we have the two button and three button navigation we have the double tap over here double tap to check phone you can enable it if you want adaptive playback is also there in case you need that and we have the playback control then we have the one-handed mode and the press and hold power button action I think by default in this ROM it is set to digital assistant so make sure you set this to power menu if you need that and again one-handed mode is also working fine let's talk about the home screen this is how it looks like it looks beautiful in my opinion and if you go to the left we'll have the discover page of google and let me show you if you just go into the elixir launcher settings this is how it looks like and by the way this is again a elixir launcher and we have the split screen option and stuff if you want to use those we have the screenshot right here the google lens the clear all and the ram usage status on the bottom and you can actually customize that from this recent settings of this stock launcher settings we have the screenshot memory info lens and the clear all then we have this shake phone to clear all tasks as well then we have the session disabling option also we have the miscellaneous settings in here we have the use taskbar allow home screen rotation normal restart option and the hidden and product apps you can use this for the app lock as well but there is separate app lock in this rom no need to worry about that we also have this background blur depth customization so that's nice to see and in the app drawer we have the themed icons app search bar icon levels in drawer and we have the row height then the background opacity changing option let me go to the home screen settings here we have the lock layout add app icons to the home screen also we do get the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen that's just awesome we have the wallpaper scrolling and zooming then the allow short parallax and the single pitch center we have the at a glance swipe to access google app then we have the status bar and the top shadow icon levels on desktop hot seat background and we have the google search bar music search and the themed icons also the corner radius is present and in the icon section of course you can change the icon packs if you download them separately and we have the notification dots as well you can elaborate from here and we have the icon size font size then the max lines for app level and the force themed icons so these are all the customizations and this launcher is very much customizable and even the android 13 widgets animations are working perfectly fine if you're noticing just opening it and closing it just notice how smooth it is even the clock so yeah very smooth experience everywhere in the ui if you just swipe up you will get the app drawer of course and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel now good thing is the quick setting panel stays white in the light theme and i like this particular thing if you're noticing this big kind of clock i have customized that as well and double tap to sleep of course is working fine and the fingerprint scanner speed it's perfectly fast if you're noticing 
no problems whatsoever it's very fast and snappy experience and by the way double tap to wake will also work and this is how the lock screen clock looks like pretty big normal android 13 clock looks very beautiful and the unlocking animation looks so good and in the security settings we have the screen lock as pin and here touch fingerprint to unlock option is there if you want to press on the fingerprint scanner only then it will scan for fingerprint you can disable this option the quick unlock is not there but that's fine I have also added the face unlock options and if you go into the more settings we also have the app lock option if you just tap on the fingerprint scanner you can get all the apps right here and you can lock them or unlock them as you like it now let me show you with the face unlock and here I'll just double tap to wake and if I just swipe up and point the device towards my face as you can see it unlocks and there is a black border on the front camera if you're noticing so that won't give you any halo effect from the camera whenever you're in a video call or something so that's a really good feature to see and here also the app lock as you can see it's working perfectly fine just tapping on the fingerprint scanner as you can see right there i was in telegram app and it's already there whenever i tapped the fingerprint scanner so app lock and the ram management everything is working fine now let me actually enable the always on display so that i can show you the aod how it looks like and yeah this is how the always on display looks like and even from here double tap to wake is very stable sometimes in some rounds double tap to wake doesn't work from always on display but here it works perfectly fine if you're noticing so yeah this is a really nice feature and just tapping on the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks perfectly fine no problem so far now talking about the basic things yes the dn 4 shows as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 10p the ir blaster also works perfectly fine no need to worry about that this rom also passes the safety net test right out of the box so no need to worry about banking apps and just in case if you are wondering if the Google Photos Unlimited Backup is here, yes, that's present by default over here. Now let me just talk about the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like and again the clock is big because I have customized it that way for quick toggles or quick setting panel. And here if you click on the edit section, you can edit and add even more toggles if you want to. I have added a lot of toggles so let me just show you one by one. We have the Wi-Fi mobile data, the Bluetooth toggle, the flashlight and stuff and we have the auto rotate, the night light. You can enable it or disable it. We have the Google Home controls. The battery saver is there. Yes, the battery saver works really great. No problems with it. We have the screen recorder and there is the HEVC recording option. Then the bigger file size limit and all these other features that you are noticing, including with the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time for the screen recording. We have the data saver, the dark theme, the hotspot. We have the always on display, the nearby share alarm and the do not disturb. Then we have the sound toggle, extra dim, airplane mode, QR code scanner, heads up and the screen cast. So that's pretty much it about the toggles and the brightest rider is on the bottom because I have customized it and the power menu this is how it looks like we also have the advanced reboot so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now let's talk about the stock camera yes you are getting a MIUI camera or a Leica camera present by default but this is not the Leica camera version 5 guys and then you will get the super macro lens and stuff and even the super macro lens for me is working perfectly fine if you're noticing. So no issues with the super micro lens and stuff. In the portrait mode, yes, it is working fine. If you're noticing right here, yep. So I'll try to give you a portrait selfie sample. Video settings, we have up to 1080p 60fps and that should be working perfectly fine for the front camera as well. And for the rear camera, yes, there is 4K 60fps, but that simply will not work. But 4K 30fps will be working perfectly fine. So yep, as you can see right now, it has switched to 4K 30fps, it should be working. We also have the 1080p 60fps, let's see if it works. So for some reason, the 1080p 60fps, it's buggy. I don't know if it's my device or something like that, it might be broken. So yeah, this 1080p 60fps doesn't work for me, but 1080p 30fps should be working fine. And in the documents mode, we have enhanced mode as well. You can use it if you want. And in the pro mode, you can shoot videos up to again 4K and 30fps or 1080p 30fps if you want. There is also the night mode and there is also the switching option of this 2x, 5x, etc. And even the normal photo mode, as you can see, the lens switching is working fine. 0.66, 1x and the 2x, all the modes are working. Then if you go into the 64 megapixel mode, yes, that too is working perfectly fine. And if you just swipe up, you'll get even more options. I have enabled this particular thing from the settings. We have the short video, the panorama, vlog, vlog pro, slow motion, and the other features that are mentioned over here. So that's pretty much it about the stock camera. Now let me just jump into the settings and let me show you how it looks like. Yes, this is how it looks. You will get a random message right here whenever you open settings. Right now it shows experience the ultimate sensation. So that's really cool. I'll show you the customization in a separate video again. Also in terms of connectivity, yes, 4G and the Vaulty and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. And Wi-Fi and stuff, everything is very stable. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, adaptive brightness, extra dim. And in the lock screen settings, we have the skip lock screen option. Then we have the always show time and info, that's the always on display. We have the OX screen for notification. When we go into it, we have the 
pickup gesture you can enable it if you just disable the always on and you can enable the pickup gesture let me actually show you that if it's working so i'll put the device on the desk and right now as you can see if i pick up yes the pickup gesture is also working with the edge lighting you just notice that let me just do one more time so yeah right now as you can see the pickup gesture worked so this looks very beautiful in my opinion let me just unlock the device here we have the screen timeout we have up to 30 minutes and the screen attention is also there then we have the dark theme in the settings of it of course you can schedule it if you want let me just go back we have the display size and text and here you can enable the bold text if you want to let me just disable that for the time being we also have the full screen apps and the night light and the live display and in here we have the color calibration options then we have the allow window level blurs then the smooth display and we have the double tap to wake ambient display option is there again and we have the custom display settings we can enable the anti flicker mode if you want to so in case your display is flickering or something you can enable this particular mode and there is a high brightness mode as well it will make the display's brightness too high for using outdoors I think earlier these two features were not working but right now they are working perfectly fine. And in terms of wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like you can change the wallpapers from right here and there are the elixir walls and these are the elixir wallpapers right now. There are the space options and the strange dimension and stuff like that. Unsplash options are there then we have the elementary options. So very cool wallpapers are there by default so you can use them and here we have the basic and wallpaper colors and up to 16 or more than that i guess colors are present and we have the dark theme the themed icons and the app grid you can set up to 6 by 10 then we have the system icon packs you can change it from here we have the system fonts as well you can change that from here too in the battery settings this is where i feel this rom just kills every other rom because this one has huge amount of options you can see this green bar this is where it shows the percentage and the battery bar kind of we have the battery saver right here we have the use battery saver normally and the turn off when charging and the extreme battery saver option is also there then we have the battery manager and we have the battery optimization per app you can do you will get the battery temperature seeing option the battery health options are also present we have the max capacity then the current capacity and the charging cycles are there as well so this is huge this battery setting shows every detail about your battery my battery has gone through about 340 cycles and this is almost a three years old device guys so with this particular battery i would say the battery life that i have been getting is pretty decent here you will notice it's six and a half hours or even seven hours of screen on time i would say that's pretty much decent when your battery is almost more than three years old if you have a good quality battery it will definitely give you eight to ten hours of screen on time without any issues for sure and the screen off shows as nine days that huge amount of standby time and the combine use shows as four days so that's awesome and in the health section for me it doesn't show anything i'll show you later if it comes up and talking about fast charging yes fast charging should be also working fine here no need to worry about that in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have the media call ring etc volume controls and by the way the volume panel appears like this and this is a really cool looking volume panel i think you cannot really see it from here so here if you're noticing the volume panel looks really beautiful and you can change the output device from right here if you just click here you can put it to this phone speaker or your bluetooth device the like changing is very fast and as you can see you can switch the profiles of the phone to mute or vibrate from right here and you can expand the volume panel just like this i have to say it looks awesome live caption mode is also there and let's go back into the sound settings in here we have the vibration and haptics if you just scroll down mode we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration and the power app volume control is also there we have the me sound enhancer as well you can enable it and there is the youth edition and stuff and there is a choose preset scene option also we have this sony dolby atmos so you can turn it on and you can have different profiles with each of them so yeah that's really nice to see that we have this dolby atmos kind of feature right here in the sound settings in the clear speaker option of course you can clear the speakers if it sounds muffled we have the haptic feedback as well you can change the intensity from right here so that is pretty much it about the settings panel let me just go back right now let's talk about the overall stability of this rom so overall while daily driving i would say you will get a really really good experience even with chrome if you're noticing i'm getting 80 fps over here this is a chrome's bug in redmi note 10 pro i think it shows up to 80 fps in like some roms of course it is running at 120 hertz all the time so the whole ui like the animation and stuff while opening apps and closing them while going back and stuff it's just very fast and fluid experience no problems whatsoever that you will face and if i go into the play store and here once it loads as you can see the scrolling and stuff it's very smooth no issues whatsoever you won't find any kind of huge lags or stutters yes it's a redmi note 10 pro so it's a budget device guys do keep that in mind it sometimes does that weird jitters anywhere so that's pretty normal i would say it's not a bug or something it's pretty normal to have slight jitters here and there because it's a mid-range device but even with that the performance the daily driving performance 
will be awesome and the ram management with this rom it's pretty great as you can see all the apps that i have opened are already in memory and i can switch between apps very frequently no problems whatsoever and everywhere if you're noticing these animations and stuff it's just very smooth experience overall while really driving and in case you are wondering about the android and geekbench score here are the scores with a cpu stress test so let me know down there in the comments what you guys think about the latest project elixir rom i feel this is one of the most stable roms that you can flash on your redmi note 10 pro and of course the flashing guide and stuff will be present in the description no need to worry about that give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.